evening, everybody. I want to start out tonight by just mentioning some of the interesting facts from research, scientific research on gratitude. Gratitude, thanksgiving, recognizing that the goodness in our lives comes from outside of ourselves. Gratitude is a very heavily researched topic. Here's something very encouraging. Did you know that being grateful, showing our gratitude, is related to a 23% de decrease, a 23% reduction in the stress hormone cortisol? Just realizing that all good things come from outside ourselves and then telling people, God, thank you. There's also something I think very encouraging from gratitude research. This was an article in Scientific America, and they reported that of 24 personal strengths, including such powerhouse strengths as love, hope, kindness, and creativity, the single best predictor, the best predictor of emotional well-being, gratitude. Gratitude, the single best indicator of our emotional well-being. The science is clear. The science is overwhelming about the benefits of just being aware that good things come from outside ourselves and expressing that gratitude to others. Now, while some may have a more natural disposition to being grateful and showing it than others, the research is also clear that the attitude of gratitude can be developed and deepened. It's just a matter of being aware of the good things in our lives and then saying thank you. And then practice and practice and practice. Gratitude can be increased and deepened. Which leads, of course, to our very well-known gospel story tonight. Only one leper came back to thank Jesus for what he did for them. And boy, did Jesus do a lot for these lepers. Jesus radically, radically changed their lives. So what happened to the other nine? Why didn't they come back? Well, I think if we think about it, I know when I did, I know that I can relate a little bit to the nine who just didn't come back and thank our Lord. After they were declared clean by the priest, those lepers were no doubt out celebrating. And they had reason to celebrate. Their leprosy was gone. So they were out just being with their family and friends. They had been so isolated from them. Living in a leper colony, they were unable to interact. They were unable to touch or to be touched. So of course, when they were healed, they went out to celebrate. And well, they should. God had done so much. I'm sure they were just walking around basking in joy because in the first time for years, they didn't have to yell out, unclean, unclean, everywhere they went. They had to do that so people could run away from them. Can you imagine? Of course they're out celebrating. They don't have to holler, unclean, unclean, and people running away from them. And after Jesus healed them, I'm sure they were walking around just so happy because they weren't being thrown rocks at. That's what had to happen. The people would throw rocks at the lepers so they would stay far away. I'd be happy too. I'd be out celebrating too. Whatever they were doing, I was sure that they were in great joy. Thanks be to God. But in their, in, in their excitement and joy... They forgot one thing, one very important thing. They forgot to thank the one who changed their lives. They forgot to thank the one who had given them so much. They forgot to thank Jesus. You see, isn't that in the nature of God? Just to give and to give and to give? Thanks be to God, that's who our God is. So tonight... I want you to take just a few seconds to think about three, just three of the multitude, three of the greatest gifts that God has ever given you in your life. Remember all good things. All good things ultimately come from God. 
just a few seconds. What are three of the greatest gifts that God has ever given you? Now let's say thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to take just a couple seconds to think about the incarnation. Think about how much God loves you. Think about the great humility of God to become human, to come, to live our life, to be with us, to teach us, to show us how much we're loved, to die for us, to save us, to give us an example of how God, God incarnate, speaks and acts. Just a few seconds, think about the incarnation. Jesus, we haven't forgotten what you've done for us. We won't forget. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to take just a couple of seconds to think about the word of God. The sacred scriptures. Which in its essence is an account of our history of salvation. It's really an account of God's love story with humanity. In spite of our weaknesses, in spite of our tendency and to many times turn away from God, God continues to seek us out. And especially think about the Gospels. The recording of the life of Jesus, our Savior. It's recorded. The words and the actions of God teaching us how to be like God. Just a few moments, just think about the Gospels. Lord Jesus, we have not forgotten what you've done for us, and we won't forget. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Just a few seconds about the Pentecost. Jesus ascending into heaven and then sending us the Holy Spirit, first and foremost to purify us and then to transform us into another Jesus, the Spirit to lead us and guide us. Just think about the gift of the Pentecost, the gift of the Spirit. Jesus, we have not forgotten what you've done for us. and We won't forget. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Lastly, just a few seconds about the Eucharist. Jesus offering us his body and blood to eat and to drink. His food for our spiritual journey a spiritual journey to true intimacy with God. Back to Jesus. Back to the source of all that is good. Just think about the Eucharist. Jesus, we have not forgotten what you've done for us, and we won't forget. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus, for giving us all that is good.